The markets are clearly shaken here, and even the S&P is paring back some of its earlier rallies because of this. How do you see all of this unfolding? Well, I mean, you're certainly seeing a lot of concern here. I think sort of the word that everyone has sort of been bandying around is the idea of taking a pause here. There's a lot of folks who don't really know how deep and how long this crisis is going to go in Turkey and just how widespread the effects of it are going to be. So you're seeing a lot of money move to the sidelines. A lot of people just sort of take a breather until they can figure it out. Keep in mind that a big part of the reason why we had so many gains in this market here in the U.S. and even in Europe and in Asia over the last few months and over the last few years was because of this global synchronized growth story that everyone had bought into. And now what you're seeing is that that narrative doesn't really hold up quite the same as it did before. And so a lot of money is moving on the side, moving to the sidelines until it could find a new narrative. And on top of this nosedive in Turkey, we have the trade war escalation. Sure. Uh, we have the standoff with China, interest rates rising in emerging markets. I mean, how much further is investment sentiment going to fall in emerging markets? Well, I mean, I think that there's just a lot of chatter and a lot of chop in, in, in these emerging markets. And I think that, to Romain's point, people are taking a step back um, to sort of see how things settle out. I don't, I, don't, I don't think we have enough data to make a call on sort of what the impact of some of these um, issues are going to be, because we're really in a new era. We have uh, government leadership in the U.S. with a different kind of negotiating tactic where they where where our president will put something out there and then people will kind of react to it. So you really have to take a, 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 a month view, a month and a half, a two month view of these things to try to figure out what the real impact is, whether that's trade tariffs, whether that's um, what, what we're now seeing um, with this you know, es escalation uh, going on in Turkey. Now this is real money and it has, it has a real impact, but I think that the knee jerk reaction is take a step back, stand on the sidelines. And I think that now people are trying to figure out what is that impact on the emerging markets around Turkey. Clearly, we're seeing that impact in the euro um, over the last couple of days with the weakening of the euro. Okay, Romain, so you guys agree on investors sort of taking a step back, going on the sidelines, but how much is investor fear driven by concerns of contagion? Are we seeing signs that this risk is spreading to other countries? Well, I, well, I'll tell you what one trader told me on Friday that I thought was uh, pretty prescient was he said that this was less about contagion right now and more about risk aversion. And he really pointed out the distinction that when you think about that Turkey's, you know, uh, imports are about a tenth of what China's are, when you think about the fact that uh, its external debt is uh, much smaller than what Greece's was back during its financial crisis, it shows you that the contagion risk, at least for now, is somewhat contained uh, to that particular region. However, there is one big caveat there, and that is this idea that uh, the global sort of uh, landscape has shifted. We don't have the same sort of monetary policy accommodation that we've been used to, and we don't have a lot of the same growth metrics that we were used to. So there is some concern that with uh, the potential for a slowing economy worldwide, combined with the lack of central bank support, that something like Turkey or, or something even bigger than Turkey could sort of rock markets. And I think that's why you're seeing some hesitancy in the markets over the past few days. There doesn't seem to be many direct risks to the tech sector here, but what are some possible impacts there if this does spread to other emerging market countries? Well, you're seeing to a certain extent in some of the European companies, particularly some of the telecom names like Vodafone, which is heavily invested in Turkey, as well as Talia, which also has a joint venture with Turkcell. Once you get beyond those names, there are a few microchip uh, companies, uh, NVIDIA, uh, Micron, and then in the biotech space, Illumina, that have some broader uh, EM risk, uh, not just Turkey specifically, but in that broader EM space. But after that, you really just get down into some of the banks, some of the European banks, and only really two of the U.S. banks, Citigroup and Bank of America. Beyond that, most of the risk is really uh, going to be found and in, in really in the European side rather than on the U.S. side, much more on the financial side than it is on the tech side. Uh, Crawford, real yeah. quick, it's yeah. all negative, sad news today, but is there any buying opportunity in all of this? Well, again, just to be clear, IDC doesn't do buy, sell, hold recommendations. So um, I think that what you're going to see is that um, going, l looking into this market, um, the telcos will be protected. Um, I think that if you're the government of Turkey, uh, having uh, telco exposure, having people not be confident in those telcos, um, that's not a long-term strategy. What, what, what you see Erdogan talking about is uh, we need to bring back confidence.
confidence. We need to get people confident so that uh, people will realize that in the long term, Turkey will survive uh, the crisis that it's going through right now, which means that uh, you'll likely see a scenario where we will move back towards stability over a period of weeks here.